Hello, hello, and happy Thursday. My name is Melissa Kerman with Melissa's Crafting Treehouse, and I'm here to do some fun paper crafting with you. Um, it's been a while since I've gone live. Uh, I was traveling, and then I got sick upon my return. So, gosh, it's been about a month. I can't even believe it. <coughs> so I have some fun for you tonight. Uh, several things. Um, I'm going to be showing a project um, made with some new products from the um, new annual catalog. And I am also going to be showing at the end of this video, I'm going to show some of my goodies um, that gifts and whatnot that I received um, from the incentive trip. Uh, that I just came back from. Um, I was in UK, the UK and Norway, a week in the UK uh, and then a week in Norway. So it was an amazing trip. So again, um, uh, hello, hello and welcome. Welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. I'm crafting with me tonight. Um, I see people joining in, so wonderful. It takes a, a little while for people to find me. So uh, hi, Cheryl. Hi, Amy. So good to see you here. Um, so I have some fun in store just in case you missed. I am showing a project tonight and then I've got some great goodies and swaps and other things that I'm going to show you from the incentive trip that I just returned from. So I do have to say, it's required that I say, that uh, less than 1% of the demonstrator base um, earns the incentive trip. So it's challenging to earn it. Um, uh, I would not have earned if it had not been for my wonderful customers and team members. So thank you, thank you to all of you who um, made this the trip possible. I've been sharing some photographs on Facebook, um, shared some more today of my final um, excursion that we did on one of the last days of the incentive trip. I hope you guys got a chance to see those. Uh, it was an amazing place that we went. It was a really strenuous hike and we saw some um, amazing, beautiful scenery. So um, definitely check those out if you haven't already. So <clears throat> hi, Laura Lee. Good to see you here. So, um, oh, I'm glad you saw the pictures, Cheryl. Wonderful. Um, comment if you have ever been to the UK um, or to Norway. And if so, share a little bit about what your experience was like, what your favorite places were. Um, when I do my little look at my gifts and whatnot and the swaps um, at the end of this Facebook Live, um, I'll talk a little bit about the trip, but I'm going to save that for later. Um, so, but yeah, I would love to know if uh, any of you guys have been to those places, uh, to the UK and Norway. We were in Scotland, um, we were in uh, London, and then uh, we were in the fjords in Norway in several different um, uh, cities. So, uh, hi Sharon, hi Jolaine, good to see you here. It's so fun to be back. I can't believe it's been almost a month or so, maybe more. I was supposed to go live last week, got sick from COVID, um, uh, actually, at the very end of the trip, didn't know I had COVID, but uh, tested positive when I got home. So I was out last week. No way was I getting on Facebook Live. <laughs> I was way too out of it. But anyway, so I'm back. So excited to be here. So I'm going to switch my screen, just share a little bit about uh, some of the announcements, things that are going on right now, just ever so quickly. And, um, and then we'll get started with the project. Meanwhile, make sure to share if you've been to the UK or you've been to Norway, share a little bit about uh, that experience, uh, favorite places and whatnot. We can talk about it later when I, um, uh, after the project. All right. So um, I've got a new host code got listed right up there. You can find me uh, and all the projects I create and whatnot on my website at melissascraftingtreehouse.com. Um, there is a new kit. It's called the Boho Beach Kit, and it is really, really cute. Uh, very tempting. Beautiful papers and uh, makes uh, eight different cards. Uh, eight, I'm sorry, eight cards, two each. I'm sorry, four each of two different designs. So it's really, really a nice kit. It was in my newsletter that I sent out um, yesterday. <laughs> There's a little delay. I'm trying to get this on screen. So um, there is also a paper pumpkin kit that is only available through June 10th. It's a great kit that's blues and whites. It's really pretty. It coordinates with the um, countryside in suite. Um, and there are some coordinating dyes that are also available as an add-on um, to that kit. So really wonderful um, looking kit. 
Just as a reminder, Summer Makers Mojo Creative Escape is in seven weeks from now. It seems like a long way, but it's going to be here before we know it, July 27th and 28th. Um, if you join my team, there is a special starter kit opportunity going on right now. Your first Makers Mojo Creative Escape event is free. Um, and uh, and then you have the opportunity to earn future events. So anyway, super fun. It's a great uh, online event with tons of creative ideas. Any of you guys out there who have attended, chime in and share your thoughts on Makers Mojo. It's a wonderful event. Um, and as a reminder, share, tag, follow, like, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, um, please share this post and video with others. So, and just as a reminder, at the end, I'm going to go through my Norway gifts, um, the swaps I received, and a little bit about my adventures. Um, and uh, I am going to go live on Facebook next week. We'll talk about that a little bit later and uh, maybe a little bit about the reasons why. Okay, so you want to see what I'm making today? Um, you may have already seen this because it is my... Um, okay, I think I froze. <laughs> there I am. Um, <clears throat> this was my... Um, Color Fusers blog hop project for um, the month of June. So this went live earlier this week. There is a blog post for it. Um, now there's also a PDF tutorial that was shared in my newsletter yesterday. So that is now exclusive content, my PDF tutorials for any of the things I share on my blog. Um, and those are included in my newsletter. Uh, but we're gonna make this card with some slight variations. Um, and I'm going to give you some tips in different ways to get the different effects that I've gotten on these three focal pieces. So anyway, I love this project. Uses the um, the new <coughs> inked and tiled stamp set. Now, I still have a little bit of a cough from my um, being sick this past week. So I apologize ahead of time. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm not going to end up doing too much coughing. Um, so this is the inked and tiled stamp set. The um, bundle includes these two punches. Um, I don't know if you can see those too well, the glare on the camera. But um, anyway, we're going to be using this one today. Um, and I just love the artwork in this stamp set. I think it's so pretty. Love the flowers and that, that leaf there. Those are my two favorite images. And that's what I'm using on the card today. All right. And if you uh, haven't seen it in the catalog, I'll just show you a quick look at the spread in the catalog. Um, <clears throat> there's a little lag. So there we go. So there it is. Um, some, and there's designer paper that goes with it. This beautiful Lost Lagoon ribbon, which I would have used if Lost Lagoon were part of the color challenge, but it was not. Um, anyway, so it's a beautiful, beautiful suite. So, okay. So now the color challenge, when we do a color challenge, I always do this little, you know, a couple pieces of cardstock put together of the three colors, just to sort of remind me and give me my inspiration. Um, the three colors are Bubble Bath, Pool Party, and Pretty Peacock. Um, and for I'm going to show you a variation with an additional color on this one. The Bubble Bath is one of the brand new colors. It's a really pretty, um, lovely pink. I think it's supposed to replace Blushing Bride that went away, but I prefer it so much. I love it. Um, and then I, there's also some Blushing Bride. I'm sorry, some... Um, um, What's it called? Bubble bath <laughs> shimmer paper. It's tucked back in there too for a nice little elegant touch. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> All right, anybody's use? Okay, I have to read your comments. Um, let's see, did I say hi to you, Sharon? I did say hi. Hi, Sharon. Hey, Jolene. <laughs> You've been to Lo London and Northern England and also Scotland. Wonderful. Um, we loved Scotland. Um, uh, it's just a great, I mean, and London too. It was just an amazing trip. Um, oh, I'm so glad you liked the project, Amy. I love it too. Oh, and Laura Lee, you've been to the UK too and London. Wonderful. Okay. I read more. Yes. We went to the tower of London too. It was wonderful. We did not go to high tea. We did not do high tea, but we, um, when we were in Scotland, we did try a bunch of whiskey. All right. So <laughs> that's the thing to do. There's whiskey places to buy whiskey everywhere. Um, Okay, let's see. Okay, I've got a few other products that I'm using on this I want to quickly show you. So this is the soft shimmer paper. 
uh, it comes in these four colors. One of them is the bubble bath. And I love this paper. We had this type of paper um, in, I think it was the mini and it uh, went away, but new colors came back. And I love that there's some bubble bath in there because it's just gorgeous, gorgeous paper. Now I'm also using these nested essentials dies. So I'm using the two me middle sizes of these dies. You can see right there. They are lovely dies. I've been also playing and creating with these shapes as well, which are super fun. And then I'm also using the exposed brick embossing folder. Um, I love embossing folders and I especially love this one. It's got some great detail to it. All right, so let's get started. Now this is watercolor paper um, and I am gonna start with the foliage image here. And I'm gonna ink it up with my pool party ink. And I'm gonna ink the whole thing up. And then I have a couple of options here of what I'm going to, what I can do to get some added color. I want to get some darker um, pre peacock in there. So I can do what's called the rock and roll technique where you just kind of roll the, the image over um, the surface. And actually that's what I'm going to go ahead and do for this one. So I'm just going to kind of catch the edges and like, like you can probably see right there, I've got it on the tips um, and that kind of gives you some nice dark, uh, color on the tips to give it some variation. And then I'm going to go ahead and spray it with some water. Um, I'm going to do this off camera so I don't get it on my work surface, but I'm just using this spray bottle and I'm going to do like two pumps. I'm holding it about 12 inches away. You probably can hear it. Um, and let's see if that looks like enough water. So it helps the color to kind of blend and mix by spraying it. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just stamp it onto my small panel here. And I'm gonna tilt it to the left uh, just to get it sort of an interesting shape. And you can see the water helps kind of mix it all up. And uh, so it has this really nice, okay, am I in camera there? <laughs> There's a delay. Um, that I'm seeing on screen, so it's hard to tell what I'm looking at. Okay, there we go. Anyway, turns out so pretty. Okay, we're gonna set that aside. Now I did a second one um, off camera, and for this one, and I did it earlier, I tilted it to the right instead of to the left, so I can kind of frame my centerpiece and they will look a little bit different. Um, so now that needs to dry a little bit. And now I'm gonna bring in my flower image. So this one right here, love this image. And I'm going to actually uh, add ink in a different way to this one. So I'm going to use my, I'm going to start with the lighter color. This is done intentionally. Uh, I've got a sponge dauber here and I'm just going to add some ink to the sponge dauber and just cover the whole flower image. This gives me some control about where I'm putting it. Now, um, I don't have the marker for this bubble bath color yet. Now, another alternative would be to use the marker to color directly onto the rubber. So that's another thing you can do. And then I'm going to bring in some berry burst. Now, I could do this in two different ways. I could grab my sponge dauber and apply it and put it um, onto some parts selectively where I want to. But in this case, I actually have the, the marker and the marker is going to give me a bit more control over where I place the color than using the sponge dauber. So in this case, I'm going to use the, um, the berry burst. My original card does not use the uh, berry burst because that was not one of the colors in the color challenge. The three colors were the, as I mentioned, uh, the bubble bath pool party and pretty peacock. Um, I did something else on this one and I'm going to explain uh, later what I did to kind of get some variation color there. But for this one, I'm going to use my, um, my uh, marker, my berry burst marker, and just kind of do a little bit at the bottom and I'm kind of fanning it out from the center to the bottom. And then I'm going to just rub the edge of the marker along the top edges of the flower. This is just going to give it some color variation 
more than I was able to get with just the berry burst. And it's a little bit hard to see because I'm trying to hold it up to the camera so you guys can see. Making it hard for me to see. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. So you can see I'm just doing the edge of the marker. So it, it gives me a fair amount of control there, which is nice. All right, so now we do the same thing. I'm going to um, off camera, grab my uh, spritzer and I'm going to spray it twice about 12 inches away, full sprays. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not done. What am I thinking? I only have the flower done. <laughs> I need the stems. Okay. So for the stems, I'm going to use a sponge dauber because I've got quite a bit of surface area here. Um, and it's going to be pretty easy to get it in a controlled spot where I need it. I don't have a pretty peacock marker. So the sponge dauber is a great alternative. Okay. So I'm just adding some ink to my dauber and I'm just going to Carefully apply it along the stem and the leaves. Just like that. Now, when you add ink like this, it's sitting on there. It's kind of drying a little bit. And so it's another reason why spritzing it really works well because it re-wets the ink and sort of reactivates it. Um, so again, I'm gonna now do my spritzer. Do I have it all over there? Yes, I do. Okay, off camera, two full spritzes. You guys can't see, but you can hear. One, two. And now I'll bring up the camera so you can see. And it's kind of wet and allowing the ink to blend and mix and whatever. Okay, so now I've got my, my large rectangle, rectangle piece, watercolor paper again. And I, at an angle, I'm just gonna stamp it to fill up that space, just like that. And I got a, quite a bit of berry burst on there, more than I thought I did. But um, now I'm gonna spray this again. There's residual ink on the stamp. So I'm gonna spray it off camera again, just to reactivate what's left on there. And I'm gonna do a second stamping of this small flower off to the left, I'm sorry, to the right of the first two images. So it's a little bit wet now, but you can see what I got there. So just as a point of comparison, right? So I've got a bunch of the berry burst in there. I kind of overshadowed some of the lighter um, bubble bath ink, but it looks so different from this one. Now, um, what I did on this one to try to get a little bit of variation was I used my, um, my bubble bath blends alcohol marker and just did a little bit of touch-ups down towards that bottom the bottom portion of the flower on all three, just so that I would get a little bit more, um, more of a dark color in certain spots. And then I did a little bit around the top of this flower. I don't think I did the other ones. Um, so th that's how I, I tried to get some darker bubble bath in there. All right, so this now needs to dry, but I love how that turned out. I think that looks really pretty. Um, so we'll give that a few minutes to dry. All right. I'm gonna set aside my inks and we'll do some of the other parts of this. Okay, so I have dry embossed my um, piece of pool party uh, with that uh, exposed brick embossing folder. And I kind of was thinking, that should I play around with uh, adding a little bit of color to this just for fun? I'm gonna do it, try some on the back side and see what we think. Um, now, on my original card, I used the debossed side. So it's the side with the bigger um, uh, shapes pushed in. I, I'm gonna ink up the back side to experiment the embossed side. So the, the larger shapes are pushed out towards us just to see what it looks like for fun, right? Cause we like to mix things up. And I need a clean sponge dauber, which I think I put away. I have all the most important things handy, handy to my fingertips at any given moment. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna use this one. And we're gonna grab my pool party and just do a little bit of inking on this brick to see what we think of that. It will add some depth and dimension to it. You'll get to see the shapes a little bit more. 
and uh, you guys can help me decide whether it looks good to have the added color or not. Now I find that um, the um, when you use the emboss side, it stands out more, you know, because it's the larger shapes pushing out up towards us, um, and <clears throat> and it's a little bit more subtle when you use the debossed side. So let's see what that looks like with my pieces on it, just for fun. Okay. All right, so there's that. You can kind of see how it adds some different, a different look to it by having the extra ink on there. And let's just put my pieces on there and see what we think. There's my other one, there it is. I don't know, I kind of like it. I think it adds some interest to it. Comment, let me know. What do you guys think? Hi, Linda. So good to see you. Yes, I'm feeling much better. Um, I'm mostly back to my normal self and um, a little bit tired here and there. I went to yoga today. That's the true test of whether my energy is back because I made it through a fairly demanding yoga class. Um, still getting a little bit of uh, vertigo, but a little bit of dizziness here and there. But the class was slow enough so that I didn't fall over. <laughs> And I have pretty good balance. Um, so you like it inked, Shelly? Yeah, I, I think I like it too. It's kind of a fun, fun to see it a different way. All right, so that's the side we're going to go with because why not, right? Okay, so let's add some ink to this. I'm sorry, some uh, adhesive to the back of this dry embossed piece. And hello, Shelly. I don't think I said hello to you. <laughs> Glad to see you here. <clears throat> it's so much more fun with friends on Facebook. <laughs> I so appreciate you guys all being here. All right, so now I'm just going to center this top to bottom, and it is just flat on here, no dimension added behind this. It's got plenty of interest with the, the texture of the embossing folder. So there we go with that. All right, so now... What do we have next? Um, let's see if this is dry. It actually looks pretty dry. Watercolor paper is really, really good that way. It dries pretty fast. So we're gonna go with that. Now, on my little focal pieces, I have some uh, an embellishment that I think is probably my favorite new embellishment. They are called the Loose Silver Sequins. And there are just like a million of these. So this is less than half of a container um, and there's a ton in there and they're three different sizes. So um, there's lots to play with. Okay, so two things I need. So I'm gonna do this step before I do anything else so that I allow it to dry a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna place where I want those little silver sequins. They're kind of like, you know, silver white. They're not like super silver. Um, so I'm just gonna use my paper, my uh, take your pick tool. And I'm actually not using any of the largest size. You can see that's the large size. You can see, <laughs> hard to get it to focus. Um, so I'm using the medium and the small size. And I'm just gonna get them placed where I want them. Okay, I got some little ones. Now the funny thing with these is that the little ones, the sort of shiny side is the rounded side. And on the bigger ones, the shiny side is the, the uh, cupped inside. So it's, yeah, it's kind of interesting. So I, that's how I've been I'm placing them. Let's see what we got here. Okay, and now I have another one right down here towards the bottom. So I've placed them where I want them. And then I'm just gonna put the tiniest little bit and set them, move them aside to, and I'm gonna put a little dot of glue where I want them each placed. And then I'm going to let it sit and dry for a minute. This is why I'm doing this step now. Strategic. All right. 
Okay, what did Amy say? <laughs> you prefer the simpler version, <laughs> meaning without the um, the uh, ink in the background. Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> Hi, Chan. Good to see you here. So fun. So fun to have my friends, my Facebook friends all here with me. Okay. So now, I just touched. Move that aside. Okay. So now I'm going to move these off to the side. I'll just put them right on there. That glue is not going to take long to dry because it's um, such a small little speck that it should not take very long. All right. <clears throat> okay, of course I put it on top of here. I can't put it on top of here because we need this. All right, so let's do the inside. So I've got just a simple piece, just a really simple inside. I'm using just a white piece of cardstock for uh, by five and a quarter. And this is just a leftover scrap of my dry embossed piece because I cut it down. I ended up making it smaller than uh, anticipated. Put some white glue on the back side and let it dry. It's very thin and I knew I would want to use white glue and I didn't want to have to wait. So um, I put it on ahead of time and I'm just going to put this down at the bottom. You could also stamp one of the images, of course, again on the inside. It would be a little bit more showy, but I'm going with simple because I had this nice um, uh, dry embossed piece left over. So why not use it, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to snip off the end. I've got adhesive on the back side of this as well, and I'm just going to put that on the inside. All right, what's next? Okay, let's work on the sentiment next. So I have used a piece of watercolor paper, and what I find is that um, when I was stamping this image, I was having a really hard time getting it straight. <laughs> partly because just of the way it was cut and you can't really tell. So it is a lot easier to stamp it and then punch it out afterwards. So I am using this punch from the, the pair that comes with the bundle. And I'm just going to tuck this in here, center it on the one segment in the middle. It's kind of hard to see here. And that's good enough, I think. And then just punch it out. And this is just a scrap of watercolor paper. I wanted to use watercolor paper so it would look the same as the focal pieces. The watercolor paper is slightly off-white. It's not exactly white. It's not exactly vanilla. So I wanted them to look the same. So I'm using the same paper. Okay, and then I'm just going to snip off the bottom and the top. Now, when I was playing around with this, I did one um, and left the bottom piece because I was thinking it could be like a, a garden, what do you call it? Like, um, you know, a garden label, like where it has a little piece that goes down here and it sticks into the ground, you know, to label your basil or whatever the heck it is. <laughs> but I thought that would be a fun use of that punch. So I wanted to show you that uh, idea. All right, so there's my little sentiment. I'm gonna do a line of adhesive on the back. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach my little piece of shimmer, shimmer paper. <clears throat> so I have cut a tiny little strip. It's like 3 16 of an inch wide by two inches. And this is just gonna go on the back side of the sentiment. I'm bringing in my um, silicone craft mat. So if, I, if any of the glue oozes out, it's not gonna ooze out on my paper, but, and it did of course ooze out a little bit. You can see it right there. So it'll dry in there and I'll just rub it off. So there's my little sentiment element. And 
Then I'm going to grab some glue dots. And because this is going to straddle um, this layer and that layer, I'm going to do the glue dots differently on the top and the bottom so that it'll lay flat. Okay, what do we got here? All right, so on the bottom, I'm going to roll them up so that they're double height, basically. Put a few at the bottom. Okay, where's my end? Okay. I'm going to actually put three on the bottom. And then on the top, I'm going to lay them flat so it'll be one layer thick. It's on top of the shimmer paper, but it's good enough. We'll do one more. I can stretch it out so it's not as much on the shimmer paper. But anyway, so that's what I got. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and, well, we'll set it aside because we need to put all the pieces together now. All right, so now my little dots of glue are, <coughs> excuse me, are uh, dry enough so I can put my little silver sequins in their respective spots. There's that one. And it's not going to ooze out because I've let it dry. And it does dry clear in behind there as well. And then my last one, oh darn, that one got turned over. And my dot. <laughs> my dot's gone. I rubbed my dot off. <clears throat> so if you don't have one of these, this is an adhesive eraser. So I ended up with... Uh, smudging my adhesive on my on this one so i'm just erasing it and now i need to grab my glue and do this one put another dot on there i'm just going to try to do the tiniest little dot so i can put my sequin on there without having to wait and where is my sequin <laughs> i'm def definitely not going to find it on this table so we're going to just grab another one. Where'd it go? There we go. See, it works without waiting also. No problem. All right, so I've got my three pieces. Now I just need to assemble them onto my, my card. Uh, let's see. Oh, allergies or smoke from Canada? You're wondering why I'm coughing? <laughs> it's I'm um, getting over COVID. <laughs> the joys of joys. <clears throat> the only good thing about uh, about getting sick was that it happened um, when the trip was basically over. So um, I actually didn't get stuck in Europe <laughs> and uh, didn't ruin my trip because you know I was just coming home. Just made coming home a little bit hard because, uh, you know, put jet lag on top of being sick and uh, it's been challenging. In fact, I have been falling asleep at like 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, which is totally not me. I am kind of a, a night owl and I'm getting up at 6 in the morning. I'm usually more like a 11, 12, 1, 1 a.m., go to bed and then I get up at you know seven or eight <laughs> so yeah my sleep is all off <clears throat> oh I'm glad you like the card Melissa all right so there we go let's trim that off and I like to have it just nice and a really nice small little tails, just short little subtle tails. 
on this one. Now, I will tell you, this ribbon is not in the annual catalog. And I had, I had sworn that it was staying current. And then I didn't see it in the catalog. And I thought it was retired. And um, I think it's just an online exclusive. And I'm so happy because I've, I've had this ribbon forever. We've, it's been around for a couple of years. And I finally fell in love with it. And I'm finding all kinds of uses for it. And so I was really bummed that I thought it got, had went away. But it is actually in the online store. Last I looked, it was. So very happy about that. Okay, so next up, I've got a couple of little um, details on how I put this together. So I like really subtle dimension uh, on my cards. And I used to always use dimensionals, but now I find that they're sometimes a little bit more dimension than I want. So I have taken to uh, doing something else, which is to add little pieces of scrap cardstock to the back of my pieces. So I have tons of scraps, tons of, you know, little tiny scraps that I just um, cut up. So uh, for the two side panels, I'm using uh, two layers thick of uh, cardstock, and I'm just going to quickly attach these. And then for the middle one, I'm using three layers of cardstock. It's a uh, it adds a nice little subtle element of dimension without being like in your face. Um, and it makes use of cardstock that would otherwise just be taken up space. So I like that. <coughs> taken up space and not getting used because how many scraps can you use, right? Okay, so we got layer one. And it's pretty quick and easy with the white glue to do this. Two. And three. Now I like to, when I'm using this kind of layering, I like to grab an acrylic block and uh, lay it down on top of my pieces to help kind of anchor them. And so I'm gonna do that just momentarily. This one already is attached. I did that one ahead of time. Um, so let's go ahead and just attach our sentiment piece. And that fits just perfectly on there. And then just need to get the positioning of these pieces. They, I centered them top to bottom, and then I'm going to get my spacing so that the each of the three panels is equidistant, spaced equally apart from the other ones. So I don't have any adhesive on these yet, but let's get the positioning, and then I'll put adhesive on. There's adhesive on the back of this one already. So I feel very lucky. Maybe I shouldn't speak too soon, but I've not been coughing. <laughs> it's been a regular thing for me, coughing constantly. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to go ahead and attach these one at a time. I really like these new dies. Fun to have different shapes to play with. Now, I also did um, these focal pieces in a couple different ways. I'm going to show you a couple of examples as soon as I get this put together. Okay, so set that aside. I'm going to go ahead and put that on top of there just to anchor it a little bit. I'll show you the other samples. Close up my ink pads so they don't get dried out. And then I'll share some of my Norway stuff with you guys. Okay, so um, this one is done on plain Whisper White or basic white cardstock. And you can see the way that the ink goes on the paper is really quite different. Um, the watercolor paper is definitely superior, in my opinion, especially when you're using water to help mix uh, the colors. Now, also on this one, I used Pool Party for the stems just to try it out and see what I thought. 
but I kind of liked the dark stems a little bit better, even with the, um, the bubble bath. Um, now, uh, the other thing that I did on, I think on this one was this one, as you, you might remember, I actually, um, just did the rock and roll technique and rubbed it against, uh, pressed the ink, the stamp against the ink pad. This one, I actually used my sponge dauber on the edges. So I got more subtle, um, bits of the pretty peacock on there, but you know, so just different, different methods of adding your color. And of course this has the berry burst on it and this just has the bubble bath. So, um, definitely a lot brighter on that one. So again, this is the plain, um, basic white cardstock. I did that one and I'm trying to see if it's in camera. There we go. And then this one, um, uh, I did actually in the same way as how I did this one. I used the Berry Burst marker, but I was much more um, judicious in how much I used. So it's a lot more subtle. Um, the flowers are a little bit further apart. And uh, when I tried to, to die cut it, I was cutting off too much of the flowers. <laughs> so this one I think needs to be cut the other way. But anyway, you can just see how different it'll come out um, depending on how much of the a darker color you use, but I really like the subtlety of the and contrast between the dark there, dark there, and then the light um, uh, bow bath in the center. So anyway, they come out a little bit different each time, which is kind of fun. All right. So and as a reminder, of course, you can use your markers to add your color. You can use sponge daubers, and if you're you know really living dangerously, you can try to apply the ink directly to the stamps with your ink pads. Um, but it's a lot harder to control where you put the ink um, when you do that. Um, the other thing that's a nice little tip, if you get the ink where you don't want it, you can use um, this kind of makeup Q-tip. And these ones have a nice point. So you can um, either add color with them or you can rub color off if you get it in a spot that you um, don't intend to get it. So that's another little tip I wanted to share. All righty. So there are the finished projects for today. I hope you guys enjoyed them. Um, and uh, I think I will include the free PDF tutorial in next week's newsletter as well. So if you are tuning in and you're not yet a subscriber, just know that if you want the tutorial, it'll be in next week's um, newsletter in addition to having been in this week's newsletter so you don't miss out. Um, and whenever I do a new project, I'm putting that uh, PDF tutorial creating a PDF tutorial for it. So you have the written instructions and photographs and all that good stuff. All right, so um, I'll do some a quick little wrap up on the reminders. And then I'm gonna jump into showing you guys um, some of my Norway stuff and talk about some of the highlights of my Norway trip. So this just gives you an opportunity to, to you know, to bail. <laughs> or uh, go do what you need to do if, you, if you're not interested in seeing those things. Um, so anyway, just as a reminder, these are the latest updates. There, um, one thing that's not listed here is the starter kit special that's going on right now. Um, if you join um, uh, during the starter kit special in June, uh, or anytime before July 27th, you'll get the first, your first Makers Mojo Creative Escape event for free. It includes um, 10 different presentations, 10 PDF tutorials and videos, a private Facebook group um, where we have lots of fun and give lots of prizes away. And the Facebook group goes live about two and a half to three weeks ahead of the event. And so we do a lot of playing in the actual um, Facebook group and um, we do play along posts. So when you comment, you get uh, entered into a drawing for a prize for that particular play along post. So anyway, and just as a reminder, so I'm going to be going live next Thursday for Facebook Live. I'm planning to go live the next three um, Thursdays. Uh, I actually, at the end of June, I have surgery scheduled. So I'm going to be needing to take some time off in July. Um, it is a uh, right total hip replacement. Um, I have had, uh, I'm going to show my face for a second. <laughs> um, I have had a left hip replacement already uh, about five years ago. And uh, uh, yeah, and so I was joking that on this trip, we did so much hiking that I was trying to use up the rest of the cartilage that was in my, my right hip. 
<laughs> but um, anyway, so yeah, that's coming up at the end of the month. So at least for a couple of weeks, I'm going to be out of commission um, on Facebook uh, due to that. So, uh, so there you go. So who is ready to see some fun treats and gifts and whatnot that I um, got from my Norway trip? Um, again, it was the Stampin' Up! incentive trip. Um, less than 1% of demonstrators um, earn the incentive trip. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, there were um, about 4,000 people on the ship. Um, 700 of us of the ship uh, attendees, whatever, were Stampin' Up! or their, or Stampin' Up! demonstrators or their families. Um, there were 306 demonstrators that attended uh, that were incentive achievers. I think I think there were like 300 and I want to say 60 or 70 that actually earned the trip. Some um, cashed out and did not attend. God knows why. <laughs> Excuse me, but um, I was super excited about Norway, as you guys know. So um, anyway, so there you go. Uh, so yeah, it was, uh, pretty amazing. Met lots of, uh, new, uh, demonstrators that I had not met before. Uh, and it was just so much fun to share the, the whole experience with them. So, um, uh, I guess just a few little things about highlights of the trip. So, uh, and just a, a little bit about the itinerary. So we, um, flew into Heathrow, London uh, airport, and immediately took a flight to go to Edinburgh um, in uh, Scotland. So we were in Edinburgh for two days. I think it was my favorite city of the whole trip. It was such a cool city, very fun. Um, we did a ton of walking. Uh, highest walking day was 23,000 steps. So it was a ton. Not in Edinburgh, but although most days was about 15,000 steps each day. Like I said, I think I was trying to use up all the cartilage left in my um, right hip. <laughs> Um, but did okay. And, um, you know, with a little help from some ibuprofen, uh, and, uh, did saw the Edinburgh castle and, uh, walked around the city. And anyway, it was just an amazing city to, to be in. Um, from there, we took a train to Inverness and rented a car and spent a couple of days in the Isle of Skye, which was just beautiful. I shared some pictures. Um, we took a hike that was up to a place called the old man of store, um, shared pictures on Facebook of that and 360 degree view at the top of a mountain of the water and the islands around the Isle of Skye um, mountains, just stunning, 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 beautiful place. My favorite, uh, one of my favorite things that we did was um, go to the Isle of Skye and be in the mountains there. Um, let's see what else. Uh, so from there, we went back to Inverness, flew back to London and had three nights in London. We went to the Tower of London and um, saw the um, uh, Big Ben and the London Eye and all that stuff. Just did a lot of walking around London and we're very proud of ourselves, patting ourselves on the back that we sort of uh, felt like we got really comfortable with the tube, which people always talk about in London. It was uh, just... Um, yeah, super easy to navigate and, you know, with a few tips from uh, from some people that shared them with us. We went to a, a traditional pub in London, had pub food, which was super fun. Um, did that in the middle of the day. <laughs> Don't usually do any day drinking, but it was fun to do it on vacation and in a, a, a pub in London. Um, so, yeah, super fun. And then from there, we took a... Um, a shuttle from uh, London to Southampton where we got the cruise. And then of course we were in Norway for um, a week, uh, did several excursions, mostly walks and hikes. Um, I posted today some photographs of our last excursion, which was the most demanding and strenuous hike that we did five over five miles um, over it's about 1600 feet in elevation gain, super challenging hike, but just gorgeous. Um, we were very lucky with weather throughout the trip. Uh, it's supposed to be very spotty in Scotland and London and Norway, um, but we had 50s and 60s, mostly sunny or partly sunny days. Um, it was just an amazing trip and we felt really lucky and fortunate, especially given that we got really good weather. So, um, you know, so we could actually see the long views and beautiful things that uh, we were there to enjoy. So, um, and you know, those are just really the, the bits and tidbits of highlights of uh, some of the fun that we had. So if you haven't already check out the 
photographs I have posted on Facebook. I posted some while we were traveling and then some more today of that last um, uh, excursion that we took um, uh, when we were in Norway. So yeah, those are just kind of the quick quickies, the quick bits um, uh, of the fun we had. So next I wanted to share with you um, and I'll, I'll show my, my t desktop again, um, some of the gifts and treats that Stampin' Up! gave to uh, us and um, what my upline, Patty Bennett, gave to me as well and to the other people that were achievers. So let's see, I'm gonna just bring this in and show you guys for fun. Okay, let's swap screens there. Okay, so um, when, after I earned the incentive trip, Patty uh, sent us this lovely little package with these Norwegian socks and this cute little ornament with a gnome. Um, when we were in Norway, a couple of the um, tour guides talked about um, trolls and that they were going to come and, you know, anyway, there's all kinds of stories about trolls. And of course, I don't know how that relates to gnomes, but that's what it made me think of. But anyway, super cute stuff. Um, Patty also um, gave those of us that earned the trip this Norway travel journal. I didn't actually use it uh, on the trip. I didn't bring it and take notes, but um, it's a lovely little book, which I'll use for some purpose or other. Um, and, you know, she included this nice little note in there for us, uh, those of us that earned the trip. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. Um, and then every day on the incentive trip, um, we go into the hospitality room and spin for a prize. And there's all kinds of candy in there and people hang out and they socialize. And one of the days um, uh, I spun for this is some uh, Stampin' Up! coasters. They're just simple, really simple little felt um, coasters. Uh, I always go for the, if I have the choice, um, the practical gifts or fun gifts. So cards, we got some nice Norway cards. And in the, um, in the, uh, uh, what was it called? The hospitality room. <laughs> um, they had a Norwegian um, game of chess, which nobody was playing. And I decided, well, I've just got to find somebody to play with me. So I learned how to play Norwegian chess. I kind of wish that I had been able to take the game home with me. So yeah, I bamboozled somebody into playing with me, a really nice couple from Germany. And uh, that was super fun. So anyway, this um, a little decal or whatever, um, was one of the things that we got. And this for putting on the back of your phone. So it kind of wraps around your phone, which I can't show you because my phone is what's projecting the camera right now. But uh, you can hang it around your neck and then you have a place for your ID card or whatever you want. So that's a cute little, um, little trinket there. Um, a pot holder. <laughs> when I had the choice to pick stuff, I always picked stuff that was easy to travel and it would fit in my luggage because my luggage was pretty darn full. Um, now this is a Swedish dish, dish cloth, kind of fun. It actually, I haven't used it yet, but it, it expands, they tell me. I have not done it yet, but I like the pattern on it. It's really pretty. Okay, let's see what else. Um, uh, one of my fellow achievers gave us each a little gift, some candies and I think that's lotion and some pens and whatnot. So that's always fun. And then I think probably my favorite little gift that Stampin' Up! gave us was um, this last item, which is a scarf. And I did actually use this because there were some moments that were kind of... Uh, cold when we were uh, on the on the cruise. It was in the 50s most days. Um, when it was sunny, that was not not uh, too bad, but it, the mornings were cold. So nice to have this lovely little scarf, um, which I really like. And it's very soft. I know I can't convey that through the camera, but uh, it's a nice, very nice little um, gift. All right. So before we even went on the trip, and I should have shared this way of uh, way back, but Stampin' Up! sent those of us that earned the trip this big box of goodies. I love the pattern on here. This is the theme, but, um, and it says, uh, you know, Norway on the edge of the box, which is kind of fun. And I, this box is not going to fit in the in camera very well, but <laughs> the inside of the box has these cool uh, symbols on them. And I'm going to take it off camera because it's too unruly. So there were two nice warm 
pairs of socks in there. They're nice tall socks. And uh, a Norway pin um, that was in the box as well. Now, I'm missing one thing. They gave us a raincoat, a rain jacket, which I wore like a lot, not just for rain, but for windproofing. And um, so I, I wore that a ton. It was a gray raincoat. And then the most luxurious gift that they gave us, which was this Norwegian sweater, a, a wool sweater. It's very, um, it's, it's very thick and warm and substantial. Just a beautiful, beautiful sweater. You can really tell on camera, but uh, it was a lovely, lovely gift. And, um, and then what else? Oh, and there's just a few other quick little things in here. And I have to go grab something that's off camera that I'm going to show you. So whenever we go on an incentive trip, Stampin' Up! They, okay, so the card. There was a card in the um, the box congratulating us. And uh, so whenever we go on an incentive trip, when you, you go to your, um, your stateroom, there's always uh, something on the door. And this year it was this magnetic um, uh, thing <laughs> that was attached to the door. And there were different symbols like we're on the box. So mine was a bunny and, uh, and there were others as well. So it's just a nice little memento. I have one from Alaska and one from Greece and one from Maui. Um, and so I'm accumulating those as little, little mementos. Um, and then last but not least, we got this lovely rolling pin. Um, but the best part of this rolling pin is that it has these lovely etched um, shapes on the inside. So um, it's just, you know, so pretty if I am having visions of putting ink on it and rolling the shapes, but then I would permanently be, be uh, uh, getting ink on it, which I don't think I want to do. But <laughs> it says on here, um, <coughs> excuse me. This beautifully engraved rose mauling rolling pin features traditional Norwegian folk art. Look up a Norwegian cookie recipe and have a go at embossing with cookie dough. So that sounds like, you know, a lot of fun to do. So anyway, this was sent to each of us who earned the trip before the trip. And of course, I'm just getting around to showing it to you now, but it is just lovely. So beautiful. So... Um, so there you go. <laughs> that is what I have to share. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, seeing all my little um, goodies and treats that uh, Stampin' Up! gave us and uh, on the trip, before the trip, the gifts from Patty. Um, they um, really treat us very quite special, um, those of us that earn the trip. It's, it's a great privilege to go on the trip um, and had an opportunity to talk to the executives and there were board members there and got to ask questions of, of some of the, you know, some of the executives as well. And um, it's, yeah, just, was just a lovely, lovely trip. So, and here I am back. <laughs> so <clears throat> again, I will be back next Thursday, um, June 15th, same time, same channel, 7 p.m. Eastern time with another fun project. And, uh, oh, oh my gosh, I just realized I forgot to show you guys the swaps. You, who wants to see swaps? <laughs> I have quite a few swaps. So these, um, for every incentive trip, um, Stampin' Up! invites uh, all of those who are coming to participate in a swap. So we make um, 26 of one project and then we... Um, get uh, 25 back, they put one of the our projects each on display so everybody can see what everybody has made. Um, they also do a 3D swap, but I never participate in 3D swap. I figure it's probably hard to travel with. So I always do the cards. So I'm going to do a quick run through. I'm going to show my screen again. I can't believe I almost forgot to show you guys that. And uh, hopefully you want to stick around. This is kind of a, a long Facebook Live here, but um, <clears throat> hopefully you're enjoying it. So um, anyway, yeah, and where I have managed to keep these together with who made them, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. So this is um, a book binding, book binding fold card, book binding card. And this was created by Caroline Marion. Um, don't know where Caroline is from. Looks like it might be French. Yeah, because we got the French lettering on the front. 
So lots of people from different countries um, coming to uh, on the incentive trip. Okay, so this one was done by uh, uh, Cindy Bo uh, Bowman. Cindy Bowman. Looks like she must be from Hawaii, says Mahalo. So, and this is, of course, with uh, the new in color paper and some of the new in color ribbon. I love how she did this little uh, sort of tail with that ribbon. So, it gave it some texture. It's very pretty. That's a very creative idea. <coughs> uh, this one, let's see, do I have the name? Yes, this one was done by Car Carol Hickman. Um, and I'm forgetting what the name of this suite is. I should know. And she did a nice inside as well. Lots of layering on that. Oh, happy day. The new in color wild wheat. I think that is the pebbled path. Boho blue, some of the new colors. I love how the simplicity and Christmas of this card. Just super simple. Okay, let's see what else. That was done by Christine Josty. And here's another one, someone from Germany. Uh, and I'm not going to try to say that name, but you can see it on camera. <laughs> so yeah, that's the country, um, in sweet, of course. This is super cute with a little cupcake. I know, Amy, you're going to like this one <laughs> or not cupcake. What am I talking about? Ice cream. <laughs> you're the cherry on top. Adorable. That's so sweet. No pun intended. Now this is a, um, one of those peek through cards. So this piece actually uh, anchors the other two. Let's see if I can get that out so you guys can really see what it looks like. <clears throat> and this is Tina, Tina Rappé, Tina Rappé. So there's this, so it opens like that. Got a little dimensional backing in there. Isn't that fun? I think that's fun. On. A pinwheel card. I love these. I haven't done one of these in a long time, but uh, done with that beautiful country, um, countryside in, is that what it's called? Uh, designer series paper. Super simple, but I love that pinwheel element. It's just so sweet. Comment and share what you guys like too. I, wanna, I love to know that too. Um, and this is a very sweet card. This was actually made by uh, El Eldona, Eldona Epp. And she was our uh, dinner mate for um, several of our meals. So that was, that's kind of fun. I got her swap. We had some nice conversations with her. She's from Canada. And another, I guess, French. <laughs> no, Canada. This is, um, okay, you could see her name. Agatha? Agatha Richard? I don't know. <laughs> another one with the beautiful, the, the balloon suite, whatever that one's called. <laughs> Uh, a nice little message on the inside. I wish you a wonderful 2023 incentive trip. Sweet. Okay, let's see what else. <coughs> I don't know if this has, is an unusual opening or not. Oh, it is. I don't think I realized that. Um, okay, so there you go. That one's kind of fun, right? A fun inside. I love those little itty bitty balloons. Hmm. I don't remember those being in that suite, but they must be must be in that. And here's another um, peek through card. Super cute little bird on there. And those dies, the same dies we used today, just uh, the other shape. This is done with the masterfully made designer series paper. Um, very pretty color scheme. I think that's Lost Lagoon and Pretty Peacock. So pretty. Pretty simple too. And this one, another in color, the um, Wild wheat, lots of people using the wild wheat and um, misty moonlight, our returning color. This was done by Pip Todman from the UK. And that dainty, what is it? Dainty Daisy Delight. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, uh, Z Fold here, also that same suite. <clears throat> and this one, let's see, this one was. Okay, I think that last one was Elaine Schrader. I'm losing my little pieces. Laura Bartow was this one. And I love how she did the little panels of color behind each of the letters. And this is a fun fold also. So super fun. Okay, we're getting close to the bottom now. This one is also a fun fold. Um, Angie Brailsford. 
and it opens like this. It's you can see from the top, it's got kind of an interesting fold. You probably need to put a white piece on the back to um, write us a card or, you know, say something because there's nowhere that it opens. But it's very cool, very fun. <clears throat> Another adorable little birdie. <laughs> I really like that bird. It's kind of growing on me, especially with the little books. Adorable. And there's another one. Don't think that that's a fun fold. Let's pull it out and see. There were quite a few fun folds. And this is Susan LaCroix. Yeah, not a fun fold, but cute. Now, I really like this one. Um, I don't usually go for, you know, the fish type style things, but I think the artwork of these fish is really um, very beautiful. I think it's done very well. Um, so I, I really love that card. I love how the little elements on that um, flanking the sentiment and they use that same die from the dies I used tonight. Um, just a sweet, simple card. This one is a fun one. Uh, it's got uh, a little window sheet in here and uh, that sea ocean scene there. It's very fun. Another French demonstrator or Canadian, who knows? Uh, let's see. And then last but not least, this card right here, uh, also made with the punches that I shared with you tonight. So part of the, um, it's the Inked Botanicals Suite and the Inked and Tiled Bundle. So just in case you wondering. And of course, the designer paper from that suite as well. So I really like that. It's just a simple, simple card. Um, very sweet. Whew, there you go. <laughs> now that is really all I have to share with you today. <laughs> I almost forgot to share the swaps. I know um, uh, I would have been sad if I'd forgot to share those with you. So I hope you enjoyed seeing those projects, seeing all my gifts, seeing the project tonight. Definitely remember to share um, this live video, tag people, follow me here on Facebook and on YouTube, um, and like the video. I appreciate it so much. Um, any sharing is always appreciated. Um, so I will see you here next Thursday, same time, same time, same channel, 7 p.m. Eastern time on June 15th. And thank you so much for joining in tonight. It was so fun um, to be here with you back again after all these weeks. <laughs> so we'll see you again next week. Bye, everybody. Thanks again. Oh, I'm so glad you liked the card tonight, Sharon. We love the colors. How nice. Uh, and I'm glad you enjoyed seeing the, the trips, the trip details, gifts, the swap cards. Um, yes, so glad. Uh, you love the sweater and rolling pin, Karen. Yeah, they're really beautiful gifts. I'm going to have to wait until it gets uh, cold again before I wear the sweater. <laughs> uh, it'll happen. All right, everybody. Happy crafting. Have a wonderful evening and a great weekend. Hope it includes some crafting. Bye, everyone.